What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about crafting in Thea 2. This game is pretty deep and there can be a lot of numbers to look at, but hopefully this video will get you through that learning curve a bit quicker. The first thing you need to know is what affects the crafting stat. If you hover over the crafting icon in the character sheet, you'll see a list of modifiers at the bottom and the summary at the top. Some of the things that can give you the biggest boosts are your skills, such as Master Craftsman, which is unique to crafter type classes, your stats, especially high wisdom, your morale from having different food types, buildings if you're in a village, and your tools. Some other things that can affect crafting which are not pictured here are your deity or god cards that you chose at the beginning of the game, the current season, and whether your character has an illness. Cooking and synthesizing materials also use the crafting stat, so we're going to talk about those real quick as well. If you go to the research screen here and go into the cooking tab, here are all the recipes you can research. If we hover over one of the recipes here, you can see that we can use multiple primary ingredients and multiple secondary ingredients. Every single uh, combination is going to count as a different food type. When we go into the new tasks here though, you'll see that there's only one slot for primary material and two slots for secondary material. Well, what you have to know is that different things all count as meat. For example, fish also counts as meat. Eggs count as meat. And uh, fruit and nuts all count as fruit. Spices and herbs both count as herbs, for example. And it tells you when you hover over the recipe. Before you confirm the recipe, you can favorite it over here, and then it'll start showing up on this panel on the right. And if I remove my face cam real quick, you'll see I actually have quite a few pages of uh, favorites. So this button here is very helpful. It allows you to only show the possible recipes based on what materials you have on hand. Next, I'll talk about materials. Let's back out here to the research screen. You see that there are a lot of materials in this game. We uh, talk about them in tiers. Tier 1 is the very basic ones, like regular leather, regular wood. Tier 2 can be found all around the starting island. Tier 3 is the next ring. These can only be gathered on the other islands, not the starting island, but you could trade for them as well. The next two tiers are Tier 4 and Tier 5, uh, the very strongest materials, but these cannot be gathered at all. They have to be synthesized. For example, golem leather requires mithril and mythical leather to create. And uh, let's go back here to the cooking screen, because that is where it's found. When we go up to new task, up here you'll find a food tab and a materials tab right under it. You can synthesize any material that you researched, and you always need coal to do so. So coal is a very important resource. Uh, we'll take a look at silver here. You get two silver from cooking up eight iron and one coal. If we take a look at a hybrid material here like golem leather, you actually need both mithril and mythic leather to create golem leather. And this icon here means that we have not researched mithril, which means that our efficiency is reduced. If we use this combination, we'll only get one piece of golem leather instead of two. Some tier 4 materials are not hybrids. Sacred wood, for example, can be created with just ancient wood and coal. So these are easier to obtain. However, something like golem leather, which requires two different types of materials, can also be used in either metals or leather slots for crafting recipes. So they're more difficult to obtain, but they're more flexible. The next thing is really important to understand, and that's essence. Every material type has a different essence. So leathers, for example, have leather essence. Stones have stone essence, wood have wood essence. Something that's hybrid, like golem leather, has both types of essence. The type of essence determines what kind of special traits are tacked onto equipment that you craft. It's also important to note the amount of essence. The amount of essence that goes into a piece of equipment will determine how strong it is. Some materials are classified as improved resources or wild resources. So taking a look at the tier 2 leathers for example, fur leather is a normal resource, scale leather is an improved resource, and enchanted leather is a wild resource. Improved resources create equipment that is much lighter, and wild resources have more essence, therefore creating stronger equipment, but they have a much higher random chance of becoming a trash quality item. So yeah, they brought back the good quality, bad quality items from Thea 1. Now they're called Trash and Masterwork. So let's actually look at equipment now. So if we back out all the way and go back to the research screen, we go to the crafting section. Here are all the recipes that you can unlock. So let's look up here at swords, for example. We have basic swords, we have uh, two-handed swords, one-star and two-star recipes, and then we have one-handed swords, one-star and two-star recipes. So we click on basic swords, it allows us to craft both but it allows us to only use two primary materials and two secondary materials. The materials and their quantities are always the same, but the order in which you unlock them are shuffled in every playthrough. 
Also, when you research a higher star level recipe, you get an automatic 10% bonus to essence to all equipment crafted by that recipe. Let's go ahead and go back to the crafting menu. Let's go into new task. We'll look at weapons first. So let's use pole arms as an example and we'll go into design mode. Design mode is amazing. I'm glad that they added it to Thea 2. And basically you get to play around with any material, even ones that you don't own. But you do have to have the uh, recipe unlocked first. We have a lot of quantities to choose from here. If we want to use less materials and make a lighter, less powerful weapon, we can use the lower quantities. If we want to make a stronger weapon, we use the higher quantities. Let's go ahead and put in silver and elven wood as an example. First you have to decide what version of the weapon you're going to craft. We have the basic, the elemental, and the legendary. And there are two main differences between the three versions. The first is the essence bar. Obviously the more the bar is filled, the more powerful the weapon is going to be within that version. But as you can see, they have highly different uh, minimums and maximums. So we have 22.5 metal essence coming in from the silver, plus 20% because we have the two star recipe. We have 16.2 wood essence coming in from the elven wood, plus 20%. And that's a total of 46.4 essence. So we get a little bit more than three bars on the basic version, a little bit more than one bar on the elemental, and we can't even fill up the first bar on the legendary version, which means we can't craft it at all. With the lower tier materials, it's possible that you might want to craft the basic version because the damage multipliers, as you can see here, are actually quite a bit higher than the damage multipliers on the elemental. However, if you're using higher tier materials and you're going over 72 essence, then your materials are kind of going to waste. The weapon will no longer be getting stronger past 72 essence. Also, this is where the second main difference comes into play. Elemental versions of the weapons get additional properties based on the type of essence that goes into them. For example, we're getting true damage from the metal and we're getting poison damage from the wood. Legendary versions of the weapons get an even improved version of that effect. I'll give you a quick rundown of what effects each material has. And you can kind of tell from the uh, icons here. So wood has poison damage, stones have shield leech, leathers have additional fixed damage, which can be better for lower level items, but uh, not as good for the end game items. Metals have true damage, gems have increased area of effect, and bones have life leech. As you can see here, pole arms don't have a slot for bones, but it's not impossible to get the bone essence into them by using hybrid materials. For example, if we use spike leather, then all of a sudden we have true damage and life leech. Let's take a look at the tool tips here so that you know exactly what you're crafting. On the left side, we have these card symbols, and they can be in any combination of red, yellow, and purple. They let you know which challenges your weapon skills can be used in. Next we have the stat indicator, which tells you what stat the damage multiplier of this weapon scales off of. In this case, it's strength. Here we have the icons for the additional effects from the essence. We have the true damage and life leech icon shifting back and forth. We have the damage multiplier here. On the right side, we have icons that tell you where you can place your card when you use this skill and what kind of splash damage it has, if any. We also have the delay, which indicates how fast your action will go in relation to everything else on the board. And as you can see here, we actually have two sub skills on this weapon. We also have the first strike ability, and the first strike ability happens on card play. So whenever you play the card, it does some damage. I really like that skill personally. Spears, pole arms, and javelins all have it. Let's go ahead and queue this up here. Even though I don't have the materials to create this, I can go ahead and queue it up from design mode so that I can save it and remember it for later. We need 1,976 crafting points to finish this item. Our best crafter here has 499 per turn. His actual stat was 49.9, but everything just shows us 10 times here. You can see here that the default chance to get a trash quality item is 20% here. It's probably due to the fact that the spike leather is a wild resource. But if we put in our crafter, now we have a 16% chance to get masterwork and only a 13% chance to get a trash quality item. And if we put in other people, that doesn't change. Only your highest crafting crafter contribute to this and only on the turn that the item is finished. Another little tip here is make sure that you keep this button toggled on, show busy characters. It really helps when you know what everyone's doing to uh, plan out what you want people to craft or gather. Let's take a look at another weapon. We'll take codexes for example. Elemental and legendary versions give you a completely different set of spells. It's not just taking on additional properties. And also if we change the essence type here, for example, we'll put uh, gems in the primary slot you once again get a whole new set of spells. And for these, you only need to worry about the top essence, not the top two. Now let's take a look at armor. 
For armors, if you choose elemental or legendary versions, then you get shielding to all three challenge types, not only physical. You do also get a small other boost, and that depends on your essence type. Jewelry is a little bit different still. Let's for example put in some uh, diamonds and mid leather here. You can see that we can choose several versions of a bonus that we want to get on our ring. We have a couple of neutral versions, and then we have multiple versions that we can choose from. Uh, out of the essences that have gone into any of the materials. Tools and buildings are actually pretty similar to the jewelry. Let's take a look at a building, for example. On a forge, if we put in stone, we only have these two options. But if we use metal as one of the materials, now we have a metal option as well. And each type gives you slightly different bonuses, but in some cases, there is a clear best. For example, a forge is clearly best made with metals. The buildings tab is also where you find your ships and your idol. So ships, the only special thing you need to know is that their carry capacity replaces your own carry capacity while you're in the water. And for an idol, this is how you settle your village in the first place. If you use low tier materials, you get a gathering radius of 2. If you use tier 3 materials or above, you get a gathering radius of 3. And in the late game, you can actually even get a gathering radius of 4. You need to use your cosmic seed to build this, and you only get 2 cosmic seeds in the game right now. But don't worry too much if you build your village early you can actually research a ritual that lets you upgrade your idol. And that should be everything you need to know about crafting in this game. Guys, if you have any further questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. You can also find me on Twitch or Discord. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and look forward to the next one.